and thank you for inviting me along to your school. Today, we'll be exploring some parts of a well-known children's book. But before we get started, here are three clues to some of the characters we'll meet along the way and the book from which the story is set. So are you ready? Story clue number one. Can you guess the book? The story is set down a rabbit hole where rabbits wear waistcoats and carry watches. Story clue number two. Our main character finds a cake with Eat Me beautifully marked in currants and when she takes a bite she grows taller and taller and taller until she swims in her own pool of tears. And story clue number three. Some of the characters are made from playing cards and they are called two, five and seven. Can you guess the story? Yes, it's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and the rabbit is the white rabbit who wears a waistcoat and carries a watch. Alice grows taller and taller and taller until she swims in her own pool of tears and the three playing cards are the three gardeners who are busily painting the roses red. But before we fall down a rabbit hole into Wonderland, we need to warm up our imaginations with the use of this book. Now, you may have a book at home with plain pages that you have to draw pictures or colour in. But today, we are going to be drawing pictures in this book by just using our imaginations and a magic story word, is. So, let's have a look at the plain pages. And after three, I want you to think of a picture to draw. Okay, after three, think of that story word, is One, two, three, say it with me, whiz. Oh, look at that, fantastic pictures in our book. Now, it would be great if these pictures are coloured in, full of colour. So. After three, think of your favourite colour and that magic story word is After three, one, two, three, whiz! And the book is full of colour. Well done. And if we go one, two, three, and all gone, ready to start the story. And let's peep through our story door into chapter eight, where three gardeners are busily painting the roses red. Excuse me, said Alice a little timidly. Why are you painting those roses red? There was a silence. Five. And Seven both looked at Two, who began in a low voice. <clears throat> well, the thing is here, miss, this ought to have been a red rose tree, but we accidentally planted white ones by mistake. And if a queen should find out, we'll all have our heads chopped off, you know. So we're just trying to... Suddenly, Five called out, The Queen! The Queen! The Queen is coming! And the three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. One, two, three. What is the use of a procession, thought Alice, if one has to lie flat upon their face and not see it? So Alice, being Alice, stood where she was and waited. In came the Queen's procession. First, ten soldiers ornamented in clubs, followed by the royal courtiers ornamented in diamonds, followed by the royal children ornamented in hearts. And who is this? bellowed the Queen. My name is Alice, so please your majesty. 
after pleasantries and conversations, the Queen invited Alice to join her in a game of croquet. Did you ever play croquet? There are large wooden balls painted in different colours that you have to roll about and arches of wire that you have to send them through and long wooden mallets that you have to knock the balls about with. But Alice wasn't playing croquet with sensible people. Oh no, she was playing croquet with the Queen of Hearts. So there were flamingos for mallets hedgehogs for balls and the poor gardeners had to double themselves up upon their hands and their feet to make arches. The greatest difficulty Alice experienced was managing her flamingo because just as she managed to tuck away its body and straighten out its neck, it looked at her with such a puzzled expression that Alice burst out laughing. She didn't have that much luck either with her hedgehog that kept rolling away. On with the game, cries the Queen, after lots of, off with his head, off with her head. The Queen soon got bored and invited Alice to meet the Mock Turtle and the Griffin. And when Alice did, they talked all about their school lessons. Before we meet the Mock Turtle, here are three top tips for creating your own characters in stories. Top tip number one, name your character. It's the first step in getting to know your character. Will your name give a clue to what the character will be like? But remember, it doesn't need to. This is your character from your imagination. Top tip number two, Ask yourself lots of questions about your character. What does your character look like? What do they like as a friend? Where do they live? What do they like doing? What don't they like doing? What are they afraid of? Do they have any secret superpowers? And ask yourself the most important question. What does your character want more than anything else in the world? And top tip number three. Once you know your character, it's time to put them in a situation and work out what they will say. And welcome to school lessons with the Mock Turtle and the Griffin. Now the Queen tells us that a Mock Turtle is the thing that Mock Turtle soup is made from. And a Griffin has the head, talons, claws and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion. And the griffin and the mock turtle tell Alice all about their school days, which are very different to yours and mine. Our master was an old turtle, said the mock turtle. We used to call him tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise, said Alice, if he was a turtle? We called him Tortoise, said the Mock Turtle, because he taught us. Really, you are very dull. Our school was at the bottom of the sea. There were ten hours of lessons on the first day, then nine, then eight, then seven, then six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. You know, Lessons, lessons, and these lessons are very different to the lessons you or I may have. Let's see if you can guess what lessons they had in Wonderland. Are you ready? Let's look at the timetable. Ding a ling a ling! Now, the first lesson of the day is reeling, followed by writhing, followed by ambition, distraction, uglification, derision and drawling, taught by a conger eel. So can you guess what the lessons are in Wonderland? Yes, that's right. We have reading and writing. The 
four subjects of arithmetic. So ambition is addition, distraction is subtraction, aglification is multiplication, and derision is division and drawling, taught by Congreve. Well, that's our lesson we know as art. There are lots of characters we've met in Wonderland today. We met two, five and seven, the three playing cards who were busily painting the roses red. We met the Queen of Hearts and Alice who fell down a rabbit hole and started her journey through Wonderland. But there's one character we haven't met and that is the Mad Hatter. Now you'll find the Mad Hatter in Chapter 7, A Mad Tea Party. And when you have a look at Chapter 7, try to find out the answer to the question, why is it always six o'clock in Wonderland? Because the Hatter is always having tea. And that's all for today's session. Thank you very much for joining me and have fun creating your own characters and stories. Bye!